you know, you never know what's going to come up. I don't think that when, how many weeks, months ago, I said forgive, I'm going to talk about forgiveness, which I'm really not talking about forgiveness this morning, but Deborah picked that song, I Forgive, and then she picked that beautiful song, We Breathe the Same Air and Drink the Same Water. What a difference our world would be if we could all get that. Amen. So I have my Sunday funnies from Chris Chenoweth. And, and this is from a book called Disorder in the American Courts. And it's written by court reporters. Now, they are, it's the recording, the actual recording of court proceedings. Attorney, what gear were you in at the moment of impact? Witness, Gucci sweats and Reeboks. <laughs> Attorney, do you know if your daughter has ever been involved in voodoo? Witness, we both do. Attorney, voodoo? Witness, we do. Attorney, you do? Witness, yes, voodoo. <laughs> Attorney, now, doctor, isn't it true that when a person dies in his sleep, he doesn't know about it until the next morning? <laughs> Witness, did you actually pass the bar exam? <laughs> Attorney, doctor, how many of your autopsies have you performed on dead people? <laughs> Witness, all of my autopsies are performed on dead people. <laughs> Attorney, do you recall the time that you examined the body? Witness, the autopsy, autopsy started around 8.30 p.m. Attorney, and Mr. Denton was dead at the time? <laughs> Witness, no, he was sitting on the table wondering why I was doing an autopsy on him. <laughs> pretty good, pretty funny. I think I might order the book. <laughs> so I want to begin with a true story. And this is a story about some people who were in a band. And one of the band members felt like he didn't belong, that he was not good enough, that he really shouldn't be in the band. And as time goes on and they are performing, he shares his feelings with another member of the band. And that member of the band said, well, you know, I feel the exact same way. You guys are all so talented, and, and I don't know that I belong here. Maybe we ought to talk about it. And so the band sat down, and another of the band members said, well, I didn't know y'all felt that way, because that's the way I feel. <laughs> you had that conversation Gosh, this I week. Conversation this <laughs> week. <laughs> So I want to stop right there, and I want all of you to think, has there ever been a time when you felt that you didn't belong? Is there ever a time when you felt like you weren't good enough? I want to tell you that we're in good company. You may have heard of our mystery musicians. They were part of possibly the most influential band of our time. Ringo Starr, the drummer. George Harrison, the guitarist. Paul McCartney, the singer. 
John Lennon felt like he belonged. Go, John. <laughs> so when you're having that feeling, know that you are in good company. And that story would have made a great conclusion to my talk. <laughs> but here we are, just getting started. And I'm talking this month, my series is called God is in the House. God is in your house. You are the house of God. Breathe that in. God is in your house because you are the house of God. Doesn't matter what your name is. Doesn't matter which seat you're sitting in. You are the house of God. The spiritual truth Because of that spiritual truth, each and every one of you matter. So I want you to put your hand on your chest and I want you to say with me, I matter. Together, I matter. Again, yeah. I matter. And what about this? I matter no matter what I may believe. I matter no matter what I may believe. Because here's the thing. If you don't believe you matter, two things happen. First, you dilute your own joy. Your own sense of purpose and fulfillment, your own ability to engage in life are all diluted. Your conscious union with the divine is diluted when you don't believe that you matter. And secondly, the law of life that we teach says that whatever you believe, you you achieve. You receive. So if you believe that you don't matter, then guess what? You simply won't believe, be, you simply won't matter as much as you were destined to matter. If you believe that you don't matter, you cannot fulfill your destiny. So how many of you think that God is smart? That God is intelligent? Hmm? Come on, guys. <laughs> so do you think that bringing life into being from nothing is a pretty big deal? Yeah. So you know the story about the scientist in the dirt, don't you? There was a convention of scientists and they had all of these papers and they came to the conclusion that they could create life and that they didn't need God anymore. And so they elected a particular science to, scientist to tell God. And, God, and, and this scientist made an appointment and said to God, he, he told her <laughs> that they didn't need her anymore. That they could create life. He was no longer necessary. And God laughed and said, let's see you do it. And so the scientist bends down and he picks up some dirt and God says, wait, 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 wait. Get your own dirt. <laughs> so 
So there is some intelligence behind the creation of the universe, some well thought out plan. Wayne Dyer describes his change from a logical agnostic into a spiritual believer when someone asked them to imagine that there was a field full of metal and thread and fabrics and wire and carpet and plastic and steel and it was just strewn across this it's just a junkyard and a big wind came along and stirred it up and it became a car what are the chances of that happening no I'd say no really slim so there is this divine intelligence always at work And you agree with that, right? Uh huh. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you agree with it. I got you so far to believe with me. So then, was there a point when God said, Oops, made a mistake on this one? Well, it doesn't matter. I've invented trillions of things and all's right in government work. <laughs> you think God said that? Ever no. says that? No. So those of you and those of me and that have shaken our heads yes and said, yeah, we think we don't fit in, that we don't matter, that we've had that, that we're not good enough. What we're saying is that God made a mistake. And God doesn't make mistakes. And so I want you to be with me and say to yourself, are you insane? <laughs> Wake up. Get a clue. God doesn't make mistakes. Of course you matter. Of course you belong. You fit. Spirit made a conscious choice to incarnate as you on this planet at this time and in this place. You are here by divine commission, by divine appointment. You Jessica, Vashti, Jim, Lloyd, Mike, Gerald, Carol, you were created to be God's expression in this world. How could you not matter? So let's say another affirmation. I matter. I must matter. I matter. I must matter. One more time. I matter. I must matter. Have any of you heard of Nick Vujacic? His name is, I'm going to tell you, spell his last name for you because I want you to go home and go on YouTube. It's Nick, and his last name is V-U-I-J-I-C-I-C. -I -I -C. So if you put in Nick and then put V-U-I, or put in V-U-I-J, bunches of YouTubes come up. And there's a series, it starts out with one of 11, and it's where Nick is speaking to a group of, of young people, and I would encourage you to at least watch one of 11 and two of 11 if you don't watch anymore. See, Nick was born to a, a minister. And this minister said that everybody matters. That everybody has a purpose here on earth. But Nick couldn't believe it. You see, Nick was born without any arms and without any legs. head, a neck, a torso, and one little appendage at the bottom of his torso that we might call a foot. 
how he thought could there be any purpose and meaning in that how could someone like me matter and yet now as a young man he travels around the globe helping people see their intrinsic worth their intrinsic value he's also about saving souls in the name of Jesus and and even though he and I don't resonate on that part of his message that part of his message about us having intrinsic worth and our value the part about falling down and getting up in one of the videos and it's the, in the 2 of 11 um, he, as he's talking to the, the teenagers and he said you know if you think your life is difficult and something seems to knock you over what do you do so get this picture here's a table and here's this little torso and neck and head standing there and when he talks about how life knocks you over he falls down and he talks to you about even now I matter even now you matter and you need to see the amazing video because he does write himself no arms and no legs and his message is if I can do it you can do it His website is lifewithoutlimbs.org. Nick Boyacek matters. You matter. So I've given you a lot of evidence about the fact that you matter. So would you turn to somebody and say, wow, I matter. Turn to somebody. Wow, I matter. Wow, I matter. And as you begin to live from this place of mattering and knowing you mattering, your joy, your sense of purpose and fulfillment, your ability to fully engage in life, and your conscious union with the divine begins to expand. It's all amplified and increased. And as your ability is increased and you know that you matter more, guess what? Yeah. It all expands again. Because there is this law of light that says whatever you believe, you will receive. The more you believe you matter, the more you matter. The law of mind the law of life says responds not says it responds to your predominant thoughts into your deeply held beliefs and this law is always working to prove that you are right you have a law that is always working to prove that you are right in the Bible and only in the King James Version because it didn't in the other versions there's a verse that says as a man thinketh in his heart so he is as you think in your heart and in your mind so you are Henry Ford understood this law and so he paraphrased it and he said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. The law works on whatever you tell it to prove to be true. And guess who's the boss? You're the boss. I'm the boss. The law is our employee we're the boss we're the ones giving orders and so then why are we surprised 
and disappointed and hurt when the order comes through. If you don't believe that you are wonderful in every way, if you think you don't matter, you are giving the law the wrong instructions. You're living a lie. The great Sufi mystic Rumi wrote, you were born with potential. You were born with goodness and truth. You were born with ideals and dreams. You were born with greatness. You were born with wings. You're not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. Know this truth about you. And so once you realize that you matter, you then have a divine responsibility. Does anybody know what that divine responsibility is? Live the truth you know. Mm -hmm. Live the truth you know. And going back to the that song we sang, we breathe the same air. We drink the same water. You and I have a divine responsibility to keep showing others that they matter. By the way we see them, by the way we treat them, by the way we interact with them, and what a difference that makes. There was a teacher who had a new school year and a new new group of children and, and she got the list of the children and it, there was Betty and out by the side of it it said 145 and that, you know down the list 151, 138, 142 and she thought oh my goodness this year I've got smart kids and she treated those kids as if they were smart kids all year long she gave them difficult stuff to do and they all made A's and B's and at the end of the year, the principal said to her, you're a fantastic teacher. How did you do this? And she said, well, it's easy when you have all smart kids. And the principal said, what do you mean smart kids? You had the lowest group. <laughs> and she said, but their IQ scores were by their names. And he said, that was their locker numbers. <laughs> Tayard de Chardin said, Our duty as men and women is to proceed as if limits to our ability do not exist. We are collaborators in creation. Ooh. We are collaborators in creation. And it's our duty as men and women to realize that we matter. I'm going to end with a final story. She smiled at a sorrowful stranger. The smile made him feel better and it caused him to remember a past kindness of a friend. And with that memory, he decided to write his friend a thank you note. And the friend was so pleased to get the thank you letter that he left an extra large tip when he ate lunch that day. And the waitress was so surprised by the large tip that she gave part of it to a man on the street. And the man on the street was very grateful because he hadn't eaten for two days. And so after he had his meal, he left and went to his rooming house. And on his way there, he was feeling so warm and so satisfied. And he saw this shivering little puppy, and he picked it up and took it home with him to keep it warm. And the puppy was so grateful to be in and out of the cold. That night, the house caught on fire. The puppy barked the alarm, and he barked till he woke the whole household up and he saved everyone from harm. This legend says that one of those boys grew up to be a president. 
all because of a simple smile that didn't even cost a cent. And so my friends, whether you smile at someone that looks sad on the street, or you rise to stardom like Ringo, George, and Paul, you matter. Because without you being in your house, God would not be able to fully express. You matter. I have some closing affirmations for us. I'm going to say the affirmation twice and then I'll ask you to repeat it. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and put your hands on your heart space. And we'll say it twice and then I'll say together. The first one is, I matter. I know I matter. I matter. I know I matter. Together, I matter. I know I matter. I have much to offer this world. I belong. I have much to offer this world. I belong. Together, I have much to offer this world. I belong. Today, I look up, get up, and rise up to my true greatness. Today I look up, get up, and rise up to my true greatness together. Today I look up, get up, and rise up to my true greatness. I am forever progressing, forever unfolding, forever revealing God. Let me repeat that. I am forever progressing, forever unfolding, forever revealing God together. I am forever progressing, forever unfolding, forever revealing God. That was a long one. Let's try it one more time. I am forever progressing, forever unfolding, forever revealing God. I am an epicenter of divine love sweeping the planet. I am an epicenter of divine love sweeping the planet. Together, I am an epicenter of divine love sweeping the planet. I am constantly becoming all that God knows me to be. I am constantly becoming all that God knows me to be. Together, I am constantly becoming all that God knows me to be. Gratitude fills my heart and overflows my life. Gratitude fills my life and overflows my heart. Together, gratitude fills my heart and overflows my life. God is alive and well in my house. God is alive and well in my house. One more time. God is alive and well in my house. And so it is. Amen. And the truth is, you matter.